Uh, moving right along. A look ahead. Now, of course, every, every time we do a, a UFC after we recap it, we look ahead at the next UFC that's coming. Now, Strikeforce is not quite as organized here. Uh, they do have a Strikeforce San Jose scheduled for <laughs> October 9th, uh, their next big one uh, for Showtime there. And uh, this one, now, while it still is two months away almost, uh, the UFC, they've got stuff, uh, you know, pretty much scheduled out uh, for their next UFC, the UFC after that, and then for the most part, the UFC following that. But this case, Strike Force uh, in San Jose, October 9th, in San Jose, East Pavilion, broadcasting on Showtime. They are planning on having uh, the champion, Sarah Kaufman versus Marlos Conan, for the 135 pound title. Dude, uh, Inglorious Bastards is now on Showtime, just FYI. Okay. Well, you know, I was given that movie uh, for the, the SAG Awards. I lent it to my uh, uh, sister and uh, brother-in-law there, and I haven't gotten it back. You never watched it before? I then? still haven't seen it. Yeah, you really should. Okay. okay. But, I mean, just in case. You know, because, you know, I, I was just thinking of Dana White saying Showtime sucks, their movies yeah. suck. <laughs> no, they agree with stuff. Well, yeah, I like, I like it. Weeds. Weeds yeah, a great show on there. Yeah, I don't watch it, but, I mean, they have a lot of good different, you know, films, and some are good, some are bad, but that, uh, Inglourious Bastards definitely good. All right, all right. Uh, now, now is this the one? Now, I know maybe you're going to get to it, but did you see? Did you hear the rumors about Fedor and who he's fighting? No. Uh, Antonio Silva, Bigfoot Silva, and they're saying he could I be fighting him rumors, in yeah. December. Okay, in the so December not, this is the October one. Okay, so that's. What I mean, it, it, that's a great fight for. I mean, great opportunity for uh, Antonio Silva. I, for the life of me, do not understand why you would waste this one fight. Uh, that he's got left on the contract, and not let Fedor fight Alistair over. I, know, I, know. I mean, it, the, the the Verdum fight, don't ever let him fight Verdum again. I mean, <laughs> at least not right now, because he's going to beat Verdum. But yeah. I, I, the, the fight against, I mean, I think this is a tough opponent. I, I mean, I think that, you know, we can talk about Fedor, and, you know, he, he's got, a, of course, an outstanding record and everything else. His resume is outstanding. I think Antonio Silva, when I look at who he's beaten and the way Fedor is beating people, that's going to be a tough fight. It's going to yeah. be tougher than people are right now. Being like, oh god, you know, Antonio Silva. But the big foot looked outstanding his last foot that fight, and I think that he's, he's his stand up is better. His ground game is outstanding. Yeah, I, I agree though. I mean, it just seems like a waste. Why don't you have him fight uh, Alistair? There O'Brien? has to be a reason they don't want to fight Alistair. I don't know. I don't know why. Why wouldn't you? Because even if if Fedor fights Alistair and beats Alistair, then you set up oh, a great dude, rematch. Yeah, if he with, beats uh, Alistair over him, dude, I think he's back the guy. Dude, he is yeah. back. He's probably going to put him at number one uh, pound, or not pound for pound, but heavyweight. Please. And it sets up a very legitimate rematch fight against uh, Fabricio Verdun. If uh, Alistair, uh, or excuse, yeah, if Overeem beats Fedor, then Overeem fights uh, uh, Verdun when when he gets healthy in uh, sometime in early 2011. And and that is fine. I don't. There's no. There's no way to lose out of this. Fedor's already lost. The luster has gone. But you have a chance to, to to move forward now, and you're not doing it. I don't know why. But you could get that luster back with a victory. But at the same time, Strikeforce has got to get greedy. Yeah. They got to say, hey man, with uh, uh, Overeem, if Overeem beats Fedor. Yeah. Uh, I think then he becomes the guy. He can go and run the table and strike force, but he becomes the guy the UFC doesn't have. Well, and then yeah. and pretty soon, Brock Lesnar, if he goes through everybody else, everyone's going to be saying, okay, Brock's number one, Overeem's number two. Now we've got that thing going yeah, again. So yeah. strike force is still relevant. But, right, you know, so it's not that once Fedor lost, they, they, you know, the ground was, you know, ripped out from underneath them. Now they still have a guy. But if they, they don't let Overeem fight him, and you can still easily justify it by saying that because Verdum is injured, we're stepping Fedor back up for that title shot. The same reason they gave Brett Rogers a t- uh, you know an opportunity to uh, fight for the title uh, as well, coming off the loss. So I mean, anyway. But uh, on this look ahead, we've got uh, women's fight for 135 pound title. You're also having Matt Lindlin taking on Luke Rockhold. Luke is of course a up and coming uh, middleweight fighter. They interviewed him during the uh, broadcast there. This is this I think is a situation where it's the Mendez Cup Swanson situation where they're looking to get Mendez's name up there by beating a good name like Cub. Yeah. They're trying to get Luke's name up there by beating a name like Matt Lindlin. I think that's exactly what's happening here. Luke is a tough Luke guy. Luke has got to be the coolest dude. You know, he's like a full, like, yeah, everything's cool. I'm just going to be here. But they're like, yeah, you've got these great, uh, you know, athletes in your family. Your brother's a professional surfer. You're a professional MMA guy. I'm thinking, surfer MMA? <laughs> you couldn't get any more. You know, you got dude, what's up? And then your brother's beating the hell out of people. I don't know. He's like, 
Yeah, usually that doesn't Same make that journey. <laughs> yeah, we're both pros. <laughs> pros are pros. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, no waves today. I just got high. Okay, and he's out there training all the time. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah, same thing. There you They're go. both pros. <laughs> Take care of your body. Also, we're going to have Nick Diaz featured on this, the uh, welterweight champion for Strike Force. He does not yet have an opponent name. Doesn't matter. But he's going to be uh, uh, listed on the card there, and uh, a possible middleweight tournament opening round. Hey, what do you think about this? Do you think they would ever have a... Nick Diaz, uh, Dan Henderson fight at 185. Because you know Nick, dude. The guy's taller than I am. He can make 185. Sure. But I mean, because I think Nick well, is about 185. Yeah. But I think he Nick fought, would... last fight against uh, well not last fight but yeah. uh, 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 Frank Shamrock's last fight was at 185 with uh, Nick Diaz. But and and, and he Nick made that pretty great. good. Yeah, yeah. Nick. But I I just think that at this division, I mean, at this company at Strike Force, I think he's going to fluctuate. Because I think 170 is going to be, become more and more uh, difficult for him to make anyway. Yeah. He's a big guy. Well, especially, too, when they keep talking about K.J. Noons fighting Nick Diaz. Like, there's no way. I mean, K.J. Noons is now fighting, you know, he's, he's like, well, wait, wait, he's 155. There's no way. Uh, of course, the only way that Nick was able to make 160 was, uh, you know, hitting the hookah there. <laughs> so you think he's going to be able to make 170? Dude, yeah. and you know what? The water offsetting the being high. <laughs> That's probably the water weight, dude. You can't. Yeah. He, he, it's like really hard. Once, well, he can make the 170. It, it's uh, it gets harder as you get older. But it'd have to be a catch weight. It'd have to be like one six something between 160 and 165, yeah. maybe 165. But that's like that, That's a lot to ask KJ Noons to go up 10 more pounds. Yeah. So I don't think you're ever going to see a KJ Noons Nick Diaz. As much as it sounds great on paper because of the whole drama and everything. Yeah. Uh, Unless KJ just... was willing to go up, that would be the only thing. If he's willing to go up to 170 or even 165, but I don't know, he may not. Because remember, Ten, he was well. 170 is 15 pounds uh, or greater. I can't see that at all. I think he'd get his clock cleaned against Diaz at that weight. Bring Diaz down to KJ's uh, near 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 that uh, 160 even. But he's not. Caesar Gracie said himself because he's never going to fight at 160 again. Mm. So I think the best case scenario is a catch weight at 165. So, but that's not going to prove anything other than a grudge match. It's not going to be a title fight. It's not going to be anything. So, but I think that there are some fights out there for him. I, I think if, you know you never would have thought about him and, and Dan Henderson until now. And I think that there's going to be fights like that. You know, there's going to be a Mayhem Miller fight. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and uh, I mean, hell, I'm sure Mayhem would be willing to go to 170 to fight him if it was for a title, oh, whatever. Yeah. Or they or Nick's like I'll go up to 185 yeah. to fight him. You know, whatever, just for the the spectacle of yeah. it. Yeah. But I tell you what, if you have Nick Diaz go up to 185 and fight Dan Henderson, while Diaz can fight at 185, this is where he started running into the stumbling blocks with the UFC. Inconsistent against top competition yeah. in that weight class. Now, uh, Dan Henderson, while he's well past his prime, is still one tough competitor, and I say Henderson handles Diaz relatively easily. I think D- it would probably go to a decision, but uh, Diaz would probably look like hamburger by the end of I it. I wonder. I'd like to see it. I mean, I just my thing is about the UFC and uh, Nick is I think Nick is is peaking right now. I think this is the he best is. Nick Diaz that we've seen in a long time. And and I was you know I've, I've been but a he's fan. He's never fought a Dan Henderson. And at the sea, but you know what? His his last victory. I mean, he got a great victory. Was it Mock Sakurai that he just beat uh, in Japan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but I mean, Sakurai is on the downhill. But I think he's. I think he can fight with the guys in, in Strike Force right now. I don't think he can go over in the UFC and vie for for the title. At least not right away. Because um, uh, I still think there's that barrier that he has with with the guys over there. But I think with Strike Force, there's some interesting fights, and I think he can win most. Well, there you go. So that is a look ahead at Strike Force San Jose.